constitutional court has ruled. After 16 years as the country's first female director of public prosecution, Paula Vanessa Llewellyn is now retired and it took the constitutional court to do it. Hi everyone, Karen Cecilia here. I know some of you are reaching out and asking me if I'm all right. I was a little bit under the weather, but I'm good. And um, yeah, I'm good. God is good. Just everyone is good. And um, everyone is taking it easy in the heat because it's terrible. Huh? I was never against the extension of Mrs. Llewellyn's time as DPP. I was never against it. The way it was done was controversial. So the fact that she reached in retirement it was never an issue for me. And under some circumstances, it would not have been an issue were she a man who was the same personality as her. But what do I know? If it's against the law, it's against the law. The rule of law has been upended a number of times during Mrs. Llewellyn's 16-year tenure. It finally catches, catches up to her, and in a not-so-kind way, too. Her controversial career ranges from accusations of improper prosecution, personal vendettas, cronyism, and sometimes a simple lack of judicial judgment that serves both the Constitution and the people that she serves. She has crossed many lines, Paula Llewellyn, many, many lines, and she has ruffled many, many feathers. And I'm sure she's going to appeal this judgment because of how she is, because of her character, because of just how she is. I have no doubt that she might very well go and appeal this judgment. Not because she feels that it is a wrong judgment, but because she feels that she probably has more to give and more time to serve and maybe she just wants to spit in at the man's face one more time because she has been doing it from she became DPP. She has crossed many lines and, and she ruffled many feathers and make enemies. You know, hers is a career that should have ended in glory and accolades instead of by the Constitutional Court. Her time in office spans both political parties as government and, and seems to have served the political interests of um, both parties as well. She was, she, I think she was appointed by Bruce Golding, the very short-lived Prime Minister, Bruce Golding. That appointment was history made, no matter how much you want to, no matter what, what you want to think of her now. That appointment of her as the first black female educated woman to be made Director of Public Prosecution, the first woman to hold that office, that was history. That is still history. I, I don't know if in my lifetime I will see another one. But she basked in the appointment and immediately took it to some kind of crusade against one set of people in favor of another because I don't know if she have any set of, of, of values. Her rulings and her behavior over the years have not demonstrated to me that there is a set of good values that, um, that guides her, any, any kind of principles that she abide by in terms of how she um, how she carry out her duties and, and how, she, how, she how, she, how she translate the law, how she, how, how she communicate what she understands to be what the law is. You know, she, she just took it as some kind of crusade right away without that. At times, it seems like Mrs. Llewellyn was like flaunting her disregard for some ju judicial processes and depending on who the accusers and the defendants were. I mean, there'll be many people. Some will be shouting, yeah, time, and others will be shouting, no, sir. Next year, sir. we love Miss Llewellyn and Ray Ray, blah, blah. And, um, and, it, and, it, and it's because of that why I think she might actually appeal the, the, the decision. Mrs. Llewellyn seemed to have had a penchant for drama. And while most prosecutors that I have seen operate would quietly do their work and then take a victory lap for a win, Mrs. Llewellyn was not that. She has a predilection for drama and controversy. She seemed to seek it out. She seemed to, to set it up for everything that she does. It seemed like she has a plan for the drama 
written for the controversy. It followed everything she did. And I sometimes wondered if her decision were being if all her decisions were being driven by public support or non support for any particular thing. And she never seemed flustered by any of that. She wasn't flustered when the public is um I don't think she was flustered. She's not the kind of personality because I, I, I kind of studied her a little bit too. She was she's not the kind of personality that get flustered by negative criticism. And she treat the positive in the same way. She's a strange woman. She treat both the positive and the negative in the same way. Her demeanor never changes about any of the two things. She plastered on that grin on her face that is not so pretty. And then she just go about her business. You know? Because it seemed that that is how she, not only she operated, but that is her basic um, character, her basic um, premise on how she's going to, pro um, um, how she's going to project, project herself to the public. She relished it. And she shows off her power in the dispensation of her duties. She likes people to understand and know that all of this is me. This is my power. I did it. Yeah, no, some of, oh, oh, some of you over the left going to be saying no. And some of you over the right is going to be saying yes. But this is my power. I have it. I'm doing it. And I know everything. She does behave like that too. Like she knows everything. And doesn't take challenges to her decisions very well. Uh, but even those... It never seemed like she's angry. She always just have that one plastered demeanor. And you can take it for whatever it means. Mrs. Llewellyn knew from her early days that she has, she, she come to the job with certain disadvantages. And she has those disadvantages to deal with if she's going to make it to the top of her profession. She knew that she's very black, not good looking, and is not from the genteel class. She knew that no matter how she tried to put her here, it not going to look good. No matter what, what, what frock she put on or how much she paid for the frock, it still not going to look good. She seemed to have known that. And she adopted a stance where, all right, I saw it set and I saw me go on. So I'm going to do anything more want. And she did. So power to her. You know? So she knew that. So everything that she did to rise to the top of her game was predicated and being educated. You know, I always say a thing that, and I don't mean this in any disrespectful way to either Mrs. Lewinin or any ugly person. But some people are ugly. And my, 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 my thing is that if you're ugly, you better get an education. Because some good-looking people can make it through without an education. It's a strange world. They can. But if you're ugly, you need to go learn ad math and geometry. Yeah. And you need to go learn trigonometry if you are ugly and getting an education. You need to know a lot of things. So I think Mrs. Llewellyn is one of those who recognize that from early and, um, and predicated on everything that she's going to be doing on being educated. But she also realized that being educated alone was not going to cut it. So what she did was she put a pep in her step and adopted the braggadocious, tough, no nonsense approach to her job. But like all educated, ambitious women who are not good looking, she took it a notch too high. Sometimes. Most of the times. All right. All the times. <laughs> and even with the best of intentions, she always proceeded to offend people. Even when she's right, she still managed to offend people. Even when she get a victory, and she should have everybody on her side for that victory. She still managed to offend people. And it took her a while to realize that she was becoming hated, despised, and untrustworthy in her rulings and her role as DPP. So like all over-educated women that I know who still believe that rising to the top is hard and therefore they have to become equally tough as the men and Paula Llewellyn adopted that stance like a general she does know that rising to the top is hard and she had to she does know that she have to become equally tough as the men equally rude too equally obnoxious and as they get older and more powerful they begin to make mistakes and those mistakes are what le led to she now 
being thrown out by the constitutional court and let me put an a a a a a a a question mark to that because she very well might appeal the ruling when they make these mistakes there is no room in their thinking process because they are educated and they had dry they have drive and they set out certain things in their head in terms of what they are going to achieve because they are educated and they're not good looking and them clothes don't look good upon them. This is a fact of life. It's just studying how people behave. I am not being rude to anybody. It's just studying people behavior. So people like Mrs. Llewellyn never usually see the mistakes or attempt to correct them. They just adopt another um, Teflon attitude and keep going until it ends. And so it has ended for now. For, for, for Paula, Vanessa, Llewellyn. But I salute Miss Llewellyn for her achievements as a black educated woman. I salute her for having made it this far to the top of her game in the man's world. And I salute her for kicking ass on her way to that. You know, a bigger up and, and give her that. And every woman in this country Every black woman in this country, we all should be proud of her in some respects to, to what she has achieved and where she reached and, um, and salute her for that. And she did kick some ass on her way up to the top, did she? So let me give her three salutes, <laughs> especially to the men. I particularly enjoyed it when she stick it to them. Believe me, I did. I salute her hard work and dedication to the judicial system. Her contribution will be felt for decades to come. Um, we will not forget her anytime soon. She will not be forgotten and she will always be remembered as Paula Llewellyn. So in spite of all of all that she has endured and, and, um, and she is still an important role model for our young girls. She still is. There are still young black girls who dream of becoming a Paula Llewellyn. So, what next for Paula? What next? She's not the kind of personality to stay in the background. So I suspect that she's going to appeal this ruling. And even if she loses the appeal, I suspect we will not see the end of Paula Llewellyn just like this. Thanks everyone for listening to my rant. God bless you all. Stay safe and keep the children safe. <laughs>